ドイツから来てくれましたフラミックからですねコンテンポインテリジェンスツールキットというデモンストレーションを紹介します。So, フラミック。OK。So, welcome everybody.、Um, you know, as I'm running the XMP technology, which is the Adobe Sustainable Metadata Platform,、um, I know that every one of you is using metadata each day. Right? But the problem is that you actually don't want to deal with it. Directly, right? You don't want it to tag all your images in advance, your funny images and videos in advance, to just find them later on. You, know? you, you don't want it to add keywords all the time just to you know, say that this is a game you're framing or your kid or whatever. So I think what you want is basically smarter tools that do the job for you. Right? So, what I will do today is I will present you the Content Intelligence Toolkit. The Content Intelligence Toolkit is a framework. That leverages existing a n y techniques and algorithms、um, we have at Adobe to, you know, to better understand digital assets automatically, to gather metadata on the fly so that you can you know, have a more effective search later on, or you can use this additional metadata within complete new workflows.、Okay. With that, I will jump into the demo. First of all, I will open up the video. That already has been pre processed by our logic, and this error application that is on the screen、uh, visualizes the results、um, to you. So, first of all, after opening up this video, you notice that the scenes already, already h a s been split apart, that the thumbnail has been created with some restrictions, like for example, each thumbnail has a minimal amount of brightness.、Right? Let's have a look at a, some you know, scene more, close, no, more closer in here. So, we just you know, looked at the audio and video and thought, what can we do with the visual information from images or within videos?、Okay. First, we're interpreting colors. So, if I click the button, you would see on the right hand side there is a color bar showing up, indicating an average color value for that particular scene.、Right? So, it's mostly brown and black. And if I select a different scene, obviously the color bar is completely different.、Right? So, why is that important information to have? So, think about you're looking you know, for images like your beach shots for a nice vacation or something you wanted to have a completely different search on. What I can do by hitting, hitting the filter button here is I can filter the scenes in that video based on similar colors.、Right? So, the lady over here in that scene has you know, really the same color scheme as the scene I've just、um, selected before.、Okay. You can imagine all sorts of, kind of new search algorithms, like you know, giving all my green images and, and stuff like that. Second, we have two additional values I will introduce now is the lightning level and the activity level. Let me talk about the activity level for a second. So, think about a surveillance case where a camera is observing a room. Nothing is going on in that room、uh, for a long time, so the activity level is you know, nearly zero. But suddenly, a person comes in, so the activity level increases immediately. With that information, what you can do without watching the whole video, you can just jump to that scene immediately and seek to it and see you know, what's going on in that video and do I need to see it or I want to, to process that. Okay. I think that's pretty cool information. Also, automatically generated、uh, out, of the, uh, out of the video as、uh, on the fly. Next up, and this, the third, third area I wanted to talk about is faces.、Right? So, we're able to detect faces within videos. You see this by being represented the maximum number of faces on the right hand side. It says one. So, in this scene, there's actually one person showing up. And a thumbnail in the middle area over here. Okay. So let me scroll down to another scene that makes it more obvious. So, this scene basically consists of、uh, three faces, three persons. Again, it's being illustrated at the top here, saying maximum amount of faces of three. And you see the thumbnails of each of the persons in that scene over here.、Right? And to illustrate that we have all this information on a very fine grained contextual level, I'll play the video for you. Dr. Gene Chen Shi collaborated with the last of the project that the faces are being tracked, the that the color, all the color of the two genes, what is being changing, as well as the two new life levels are being adjusted、um, throughout the video. Very, very wonderful because 
How's that? Cinemas, So let me disable the three feature areas I've just talked about to fully focus on the next one. So with CS4, video applications already have the capabilities to turn speech, spoken words, into text. That's pretty useful because um, if you have that text around, which is being shown at the, at the pane here at the bottom, you can do all sorts of, uh, you know, interaction with your uh, video in terms of searching. So, but let me play the video first to illustrate that while the woman is speaking, the words are actually being highlighted over there while she's speaking um, through the playhead. And actually this kind of thing will stimulate them. Okay. What, what do I do with all this text now? So one thing I could do is search, right? So let me type in multimedia into the search box. And if I hit return, it will jump immediately to that scene where multimedia is being spoken. Right. There's another scene where it's being spoken, so I can, you can just skip through the video very effectively um, without listening to all the material and the footage. <clears throat> so basically we stopped at that scene, and when I hit play again, we should you know, hear loud and clear this woman saying multimedia. Listen. Multimedia really is, if not the, at least one of the most critical language. Okay. One thing I wanted to show uh, um, at the end of my presentation, you know, speech attacks, you have all this kind of huge data now hanging around, and you don't want to, to deal with this whole data you know, all the time. So we have, and thanks to the advanced technology team at Adobe, we have um, incorporated an algorithm that basically takes the existing data and compresses it to a keyword summary. So often you're just interested in what's, the, listen, what's being said in that scene most often. So by enabling the part over here, you see that multimedia is being ranked top on the list of things um, that are being interested in this particular scene. Okay, besides that you can use that for further search operations, you know, think about with all that contextual information you have right while playing that video, you can simply take this information and overlay an advertisement to it, right? So this scene is about multimedia, you wanted to have an kind of advertisement, you wanted to go back to a store, you wanted to go back to your back or whatever you do. I will illustrate that by basically playing the video again. I have, you know, we have overlaid some dynamic elements and by basically clicking on some of those, you have all the full, full power of the Adobe Flash platform and the whole interactivity based on that contextual information. Okay, so if I can click, you can see the, you see the controls over here, and if I click on multimedia, it will go off and reach out to the web, goes to Google, and searches for multimedia right away. Right? You can imagine all sorts of interactivity here. Okay, and by the way, for this presentation, no manual metadata has been entered. That's all being automatically generated.